We're in the Musée d'Orsay, standing in front of Renoir's beautiful 1876 Moulin de la Galette. What really strikes is just how vibrant, how rich the color is. Reproductions simply don't do this painting no, justice. The greens and the blues and the pinks and the oranges are incredibly vivid. I mean, the, the painting glows light. This is a fairly large Impressionist painting for a, a image painted out of doors. So let's locate this in history for just a moment. This is 1876. That's two years after the first Impressionist exhibition. Right. And it's only five years after the Paris Commune when Paris was burning. This painting is all about pleasure and well-being. It is. We're sort of just at the outskirts of Paris. Right, on the northern hill. And still quite rural in many ways, and was a place really where the working class lived, but which was frequented by the middle class. And we're in a place called the Moulin de la Galette, which was an outdoor dance hall. So you can imagine outdoor music and food and dancing and mingling and flirting and that's exactly what Renoir gives us in a way that's amazingly uncomposed. He's really captured that sense of the movement of the crowd. You use the word movement and you use the word mingling and it is absolutely the subject but it's also the optical experience because the way that the sun sort of dabbles through the leaves of this open garden and the way that it sort of picks up certain things and hides other things, there is this sort of swirl of light and shadow in a way that speaks of the momentary, of the mutability of everything, and that everything is now open, everything is in flux, everything is possible. It is, in that way, a tremendously modern painting. And we know there's this new interest in Paris, in leisure, and for Renoir especially, in the pleasure of that leisure. Members of the Impressionist group like Degas will paint the disassociations that happen between people when they come together in the city. But for Renoir, when they come together, there's this remarkable bonding that happens. It feels easy and very carefree. There's two female figures in the center, one who leans on the other's shoulders while the other one turns her back around to flirt with a, a man who faces toward them. I mean, everyone feels like they know everyone else, even in Paris, right? Where this right, is this major city. This yeah. is a huge city at this point. And there's this feeling of conviviality, of a small neighborhood. And of easy exchange. Yes. And this is a moment when the middle class, when an industrial society is now all about exchange. But now it's an exchange that exists in the social realm as well. And this is a painting we had said about pleasure. You get a sense of Renoir's own pleasure in painting this. Yeah. Look at the brushwork. Look, yeah. for instance, at the still life in the lower right corner. Yeah. And look at those glasses of wine or beer. Uh, Renoir has caught, for instance, that man refilling his pipe, which is upended on yeah. the table. These Great wonderful moments. little vignettes, yeah. but the way in which the brush strokes vertically up those glasses, creating simultaneously the sense of light and the sense of the coolness of the glass itself. Or look at the dappled sunlight on the back of that figure. The By artist the is enjoying himself enormously. He is, and that the pinks and blues of her dress, the yellows and grays on the straw hats of the boaters, and the men, I mean, it's just a, a tour de force, really, of painting. And this whole loose brushwork, I mean, this is a kind of painting that would have been unacceptable, you know, or even difficult to imagine before the Impressionists. The Impressionists are taking things that are sketchy, beginning with the inspiration of Manet, taking this kind of loose, open brushwork where forms don't have really clear contours and are, are represented in a very sketchy way, a way that represents the sense of movement and flux and the ephemerality so, of modern life. So the goal is not a kind of resolution of the visual, but actually to catch that sense of the momentary, to catch that, that sort of broader experience of seeing. And when that happens, the distinction between foreground and background begins to dissolve. Begins to dissolve. I mean, we can tell the, because the forms in the background are smaller. But, you know, generally speaking, forms in the background would be less intense in color. In a sense, what that does is it invites your eye to move across the surface as a whole. And so he wants us to take in sort of the entirety of the swirling bodies, of the fluctuating light, yeah. of all of that. And at the same time that we take in all of it, our eye stops in several places couples dancing cheek to cheek, couples who in the back on the bench behind who seem to have in the middle of a little bit of a tiff perhaps you know so you do get places where your eye can rest but in general your eye takes in this swirl of modern life and pleasure mm -hmm. 